that it's late November, apple picking season is coming to an end. But turning those apples into cider will continue. And lately, business has been booming. Cider sales in the U.S. have increased nearly 500 percent since 2011. And the number of cideries has grown more than four times from 187 to 820. One cider product relies on winter's natural cold to turn it into liquid gold. And now the country's largest cider maker wants to take a bite out of that market. Adriana Diaz traveled to apple country to see how this seasonal specialty is made. Nestled in the Quebec countryside is a farm so picturesque it looks like a living postcard. Horses graze in the pasture as their owner and his best friend roam the grounds. But despite his tranquil surroundings, Christian Bartimuf is no ordinary farmer. He's a disruptor credited for reviving Canada's apple industry. It takes a village, yeah. they say. <laughs> Not a village, a big town. He did it three decades ago when he invented ice cider, an alcoholic apple drink akin to dessert wine. It takes advantage of something Canada has in abundance, the cold. No, I pick apple when there is minus 10 Celsius in the apple. Instead of picking apples in the fall, he waits until they freeze in the winter when the apple sugar peaks. He was inspired by a popular drink called ice wine, which is made from frozen grapes. I look apple in the tree and I ask me why I don't try with apple. And I put in basket for frost and... Uh, that's the ice cider was born. What started with one apple tree has grown to hundreds at his vineyard Clos Serigna, where tourists flock for tastings. Outside, Bartimov walked us through his process. Do you pick it like this? No, I pick like this. Oh, you go to the trunk yes, and you shake yes, it? Yes. I put a lot, uh, a big, big... Um, blankets? Blankets and uh, helmet and... <laughs> The apples are then pressed immediately. That allows the frozen water to remain with the leftover pulp, so only the concentrated sugary nectar is extracted. All this stainless steel tank, that's ice cider. During fermentation, about half of the high sugar content turns to alcohol, allowing the cider to keep its sweet taste despite a 10% alcohol content. Oh, that's delicious. But it's not like regular cider or apple juice. It's sweet and tart and fruity. But ice cider was once a hard sell, says Bartimov's partner, Louise Dupuy. In the 70s, big companies started to do cider, but the cider was very bad, even for the health. So the government decided to take this out of the, of the market. And the people, they just kept the idea that cider was a very bad thing to have. We said, OK, it's apple wine. Since wine was there, they said, apple wine, oh my God, what a good idea. With his newfound success, Canada approved Bartimov to sell ice cider. And soon, other Quebecers joined in. The ice cider movement spread south to Vermont, when Eleanor Legere's basement hobby of making the drink flourished into a company. We went and visited 26 restaurants, a couple stores, and all but one of them bought, and then they rebought. we were sold out, and they wanted more. And that was when we sort of looked at each other and said, Oh, maybe this is not a hobby. <laughs> Legere founded Eden Specialty Ciders and a year later became the first American ice cider maker approved by U.S. regulators. It was critical because our whole intention when we started in 2007 was to make ice cider primarily, not hard cider. And if we didn't get an approval for a label to say ice cider, then we weren't going to do anything commercially with it. Unlike Bartimuf in Canada, Legere, like most American ice cider makers, picks the apples in the fall, not the winter. She later freezes its juice to make the ice cider. The fastest we can make an ice cider is um, about a year, year and a half. But there's a lot of time where it, um, we're just letting time and nature do its thing to develop the flavors in the tank or in a barrel. Legere is considered America's top ice cider maker. And in 2016, she collaborated with the country's largest hard cider company, Angry Orchard. Uh, so this is Crisp Apple. It's our flagship cider. And what kind of sets it apart from some of the work that we're doing around ice cider is generally in ice cider, you're not using the bittersweet cider apples. Ryan Burke is head cider maker at Angry Orchard, which is now making its own ice cider. I think ice cider gives a new experience in cider drinking. It's great as an aperitif, and I think 
the cider that we made with Eleanor makes it more of a sessionable cider too. There's so many ways that cider can be its own thing and then within that very different from each other by style. But it's not cheap. Each bottle requires up to 100 apples, and that's just one of the challenges to making this sweet treat. We'll see what this uh, winter brings, but you know, for us, last year it didn't get cold enough to uh, freeze thaw, freeze thaw, the process that you need uh, to make great ice cider. Weather is a key ingredient, but it may also be this delicacy's downfall. I think the, the, the best of ice cider is behind. I'm not sure there is ice cider here in uh, 15 years. Because of global warming? What? Yes. Right. Sure. Is it getting warmer here? Yes, it is. Yes. You notice? Yes. Oh, yes. There, is, there is 10 years. It's very easy to make ice cider every winter. Now, no. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Adriana Diaz, Frelisburg, Quebec. That is such a Debbie Downer. Yeah, I hope we don't lose this. I mean, this is another reason to fight climate change. <laughs>